Thank you, Jerome, so much. And thank all of you for being here today for this incredibly important and timely conference. I had the privilege of being named by Nancy Pelosi, the new speaker of the House of Representatives, um, to become the chairman of the only select committee which she is going to create in her first two years as Speaker of the United States Congress, and that is the Select Committee on Energy Independence and Global Warming. And uh, now, you know, we all know Nancy Pelosi is uh, the most powerful Italian since Julius Caesar. And, uh, and so she had a decision to make with regard to how she was going to use her power. And at the top of her list, she put ending the war in Iraq. And she has focused on that like a laser since the day that she was sworn in as speaker. And we all now realize that it was not a war that was begun because there was a nuclear weapons program in Iraq. It turns out that President Bush knew there was no nuclear weapons program in Iraq. It turns out that the war did not start because there was a link between Al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein because it turns out President Bush knew there was no link between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda. What we do know, though, is that President Bush is an oil man, Dick Cheney is an oil man, and Iraq had the second highest reserves of oil in the world. Do you think it might have been a war over oil and our need in the United States to continue to import oil from overseas? You might remember two years ago that President Bush, in April of 2005, invited a Saudi prince to his home in Crawford, Texas as the price of gasoline in the United States was skyrocketing. And he held the hand of that Saudi prince. Do you remember that scene? He held the hand of that Saudi prince and took him into his home in Crawford, Texas and asked the Saudi prince to please produce, please produce two million more barrels of oil a day that the United States of America could pay $65 a barrel for. Now, Phil Angelides has already made a reference to this. In 1961, with Sputnik up in the air, with their fear that the United States was falling behind the Soviet Union, President Kennedy was faced with a similar challenge. Did he hold the hand of Khrushchev and ask him, please, please, don't hurt the United States of America? No. He challenged the American people to put a man on the moon in eight years so that we would control the technology. We would control the heavens. We would lead the Soviet Union technologically in the historical dust bin. And the American people met that challenge. That is where we are right now in the United States. We have a similar generational challenge. And that challenge is to take on the oil, the gas, the coal, the auto industries that have been driving this agenda for our country over the last several generations. For example, with regard to energy independence, in 1986, we imported 27% of our oil. 27% of our oil, 1986. Last year, we imported 60% of our oil from countries overseas that we should not be importing it from. 
making us more and more dependent upon parts of the world that we should not be dependent upon. In fact, inside of the tax code, there is a tax break if you buy a Hummer inside the United States tax code, which must be repealed. We have to give the tax breaks for hybrids, for energy efficiency, for renewable energy, not to purchase Hummers in our country. This historic debate is one which we are now beginning in the United States House and Senate. There are three critical components of it. Let me just, before I go there, let me just tell you that Speaker Pelosi asked me to organize the Select Committee on Energy Independence and Global Warming to take a trip to Greenland so that we could stand on this ice cap on the top of Greenland. Think of an ice cap 1,000 miles long, 200 miles wide, and 10 Empire State Buildings high. So think of looking up at the Empire State Building and keep going 10 more times to see the top of this block of ice that's a thousand miles long. And on the top of it now are lakes. And these lakes, because it's so warm up there now, dig out these crevices which turn into moulins, which are cylindrical tunnels which burrow right to the bottom of this ice cap which then, with all this water, this warm water descending, lubricates the bottom of the ice cap, which sends then the glacier to the sea, which then breaks off the icebergs, which are now increasingly dropping into the ocean, raising the ocean level. If all of the ice of Greenland went into the water, the worldwide sea level would go up 20 feet. We saw, Speaker Pelosi and I saw a flotilla of icebergs floating in the ocean off of the coast of Iceland. This is no small threat because the Inuit tribe, which runs Greenland, of seeing their entire life changed. The ocean, which used to freeze in the winter, no longer freezes. The dog sleds that used to go across the ocean because of the ice can no longer do so. The types of fish which they used to catch are now changing because the water is becoming so warm. This is a looming crisis, not only for them, but for the entire planet. And there are three things we have to do. Number one, we have to improve the efficiency of all of the automobiles, all of the SUVs, all of the vehicles which we drive. All efficiency. All of the appliances, all the buildings, all the commercial uh, uh, sites that we have in America. All of it must be made more efficient. Number two, we have to invest massively in renewable energy resources as the future of our country. As part of Nancy Pelosi's 6 and 06 agenda, number six was energy. And what she did was she took the legislation, which I had actually passed on the House floor but was blocked in the Senate in 2006 with the Republican Senate, to reclaim $14 billion from the oil and gas industry, and at my recommendation, to then create a $14 billion renewable energy trust fund so we're moving on to the future. And that bill passed the House of Representatives in January and is now moving. It's now over in the United States Senate. And we must do more with all of our electric utilities uh, so that all of them understand that there is a goal that we have in our country to generate electricity from renewable energy. And third, carbon capture and sequestration so that we invest in the technology that can capture the carbon which is sent into the atmosphere by uh, the coal industry generating electricity in our country so that we reduce dramatically uh, the amount of emissions which ultimately contribute to this huge problem. We see that 
from Sir Nicholas Stern in Great Britain, that jobs will be created. In fact, there are more jobs to be created by moving forward than by not moving forward on this agenda. We create the green collar jobs of the future that have, has another industrial revolution in our country creating those opportunities for people who live in our country that are wondering what is the role of our country in the next generation. There is a moral challenge for our country. The uh, Council of Catholic Bishops, every religion, in, in, the, in the United States is now talking about this as a moral issue as well, and we must respond. The governors, the cities, the state treasurers like Phil Angelides, the great environmental groups in our country, Kyle Polk leads this Sierra Club at the front, the, the very, very front of this movement to change this country, and we must follow them. Uh, Jerome Ringo with the Apollo Alliance has been unbelievable in creating this agenda for our country. Bob Borsage, take back America. That's why you're here. What is the most important agenda to break this link between war and energy? Well, it is for the United States to create this new agenda for not only us, but for the entire planet. That is our time. This is the time. This is the place. You are the people who are going to make the difference this year in the United States Congress in Washington, D.C. We need your energy level. President Kennedy used to say that we, that God's work on earth must truly be our own. There is no greater work for us to be engaged in than to change the energy and environment agenda of this country. George Bush will go down in history as the worst president that we have ever had. But the American people are going to go down in history as the greatest people this planet has ever known. And this is the year where we are going to begin to change the, the agenda, not only for our country, but for the planet. Because on every one of these issues, on climate change, on energy, on renewables, there's one thing that separates the people in this audience and George Bush. We are right and he is wrong and this is the year to prove it. Thank you all so, so much.